Okay, hello. Welcome to the first episode of my Oryx MVP tutorial videos on the Oryx MVP architectural pattern on Android. Uh, before we get started, uh, you should definitely watch a video or a talk I did on YouTube. I'll link it in, my, in the description. I did it at the Android developer meetup in Dublin uh, late last year. I think it was around August or that, or summer, maybe October, I can't really remember. Anyway, I did a talk on this particular uh, architecture pattern. And it's a pattern that I have sort of developed slowly over time, necessity, through work and a bunch of other things. But eventually I've ended up with this sort of pattern that I really, really like developing in. And I've yet to see, well, really anyone use anything similar. Um, I think it is truly on its own. So a couple of things to note for this. This is a very advanced Android tutorial set um, series. So you'll need to understand things like dependency injection. Uh, you're going to need to understand Oryx Java a little bit because this will make heavy use of Oryx Java. Even though it's not 100% required, we'll go through one video on how to do it without Oryx Java, but I'd highly recommend using Oryx Java. And this is beyond, you know, doing a few requests and callbacks or Java. This is like building the entire app on top of it. Um, so yeah, we need Dagger 2 or Java. You'll need to know architectural patterns like MVP and stuff because this builds on top of MVP in particular. And that's really it. So for the actual project setup, we've got a standard Android project. Um, I have set up, you know, standard project. I've created all my Dagger stuff already. I've already set up some uh, app component stuff. Actually, as a matter of fact, I need to add some things in here. I need to add some uh, methods in here for different things that we're going to need. For example, the GitHub service. GitHub network. So this app is basically a simple little app that will list. Uh, you have to type in a username. It'll go to a new. It'll download the information, go to a new screen, display the list of repository of our username, and then we we'll tap on the repository, and it'll bring up things. So it'll be three screens in total. It's very basic. And we're going to need our Picasso instance as well, which has been created by Dagger. Uh, this has all been pre-created. So this is my network module, where I've got my retrofit, my logging system, OK HTTPs, link to Picasso, we have a single instance here. Caching is all set up for a network. Uh, we have our JSON module, which provides our JSON. Uh, we're going to be using auto value as well. So this is this uh, GitHub type adapter factory. So if we look at our model class here, the, we have the serialized names and all. This is an auto value class. You'll need to know how to use auto value as well. We're going to be using retrofit, but you probably won't see a lot of that. And just general Android goodness. Um, for a full list of the dependencies and libraries you'll need to understand, uh, we're going to be using Retro Lambda. So you're going to need to understand uh, Java 8 lambdas and their notation. I won't be using method references, but I will be using all the rest of the Lambda notation. If any of you don't know what that looks like, I'll very quickly give you a sample. So... Oh, I don't have the module in place. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Class. I won't actually go into the Oryx MVP until the next video, but I'll need to uh, go through the basics here so we know what we're dealing with. So if I show you what a Lambda looks like, it's an abstraction over single abstract methods. So if we give ourselves a button to work with, and then we say set on click listener, and normally you'd say set new on click listener and you get this but a lambda allows you to it's a java 8 feature allows you to basically shorten it down to this um, so this is our view here and it's applying to this particular block of code you will need to understand how those work uh, they're very straightforward the reason i'm able to use the java 8 language feature is because of the retro lambda library uh, we're using auto value 
which is the value types class from Google. And we're using two extensions to it. We're using auto value JSON and auto value parcel. And I'm using the parcel adapter to handle uh, Yoda time. Using Dagger 2, we're using Picasso, uh, Retrofit, OKHTTP, OK and we've got a logging interceptor so we can see our network requests in the logs. We've also got the Picasso 2 OKHTTP OK tree downloader from Jake Wharton, which will connect Picasso to OKHTTP OK so we can see those requests. We're using JSON and Yoda time serializers for that. We're using uh, Butterknife. We're using Oryx Java. Uh, we're using my Oryx save state library and then we're using the binding libraries, uh, support libraries. We're using Yoda time. Very important Yoda time is. And then we're using uh, Timber as well for logging because it's just it's just a handy little logging library. And then we're using the uh, some mocking tools. So we're using Mockito and Google Truth for our testing when we get to doing testing on this. So I suppose that's sort of the first video. Uh, the introduction to all this, we're using annotation processors and APT. All this code's on GitHub. I'm going to tag after each episode so you can follow along much easier. And I think I'll leave that at the introduction. So check out the description. The repo will be in there. And you'll also have the uh, link to the Oryx MVP talk, the presentation I gave on it. Uh, it'll either be on my channel or on the uh, channel where the meetup was held. So at the end of this video, we're going to do our git. Um, we're going to do our commit for end of video one. We're going to do our tag. which is video one end and then we're going to do our git push and that will push it up to github for me great so that's it for this video guys and we'll get started using oryx mvp in the next video